and some days I feel like Tozer. You know, I have been around a long time in Christendom, so to speak. As a born again Christian, I saw the early Jesus movement and I watched how the disorganization became organization, how sometimes some of the good ideas that people didn't really know what to do with had to learn some discipline along the way and structure themselves in a simple way to get organized in order to become something that they are today. And there were obvious consequences and people, you know, going through gyrations and obscurations of not knowing what to do and how to do it. And as much as the joy was in the entire movement of Jesus freaks getting together and becoming Jesus people and moving into a Jesus generation and moving outward into ministry, there were a lot of people that failed and fell down and fell apart and fell away from God at times. And sometimes they made wrong choices and God brought them back and they learned that you know God was with them no matter what. So they managed to keep going. Some of them didn't. Some of them to this day have become tragic in the sense that they've turned away. You know, so having seen that, I also was able to, in the early days of the internet, you know, become a part of it with the Usenet and then other things and ministries and watched how the early Hebraic roots or Hebrew roots or people that were just beginning to learn their their Jewish heritage, you know, and adapt it to the scriptures and find that they could balance out the two because there was a certain amount of truth to being Judeo-Christianity in the aspect of revealing in their lives that which was part of God, you know, that his own son was called Yeshua and Jesus and that both were okay. But then I watched as it went off on a tangent and became something that it should never have become. When it should have been a light into the generations, it turned out in the latter days to be more of a confrontation between the law and grace, which it never should have done, and they failed becoming more Judeo than they became Christian. And the sad part was you saw that you know, some may have survived, but the majority, 90% of the messianic movement became a cult, became off, and went off on tangents. And those Jews that loved the Lord and loved Jesus, you know, were able to, in some ways, enjoy their heritage, but in other ways, sometimes were brought down by the entire movement itself. And so sadly, I've seen what the consequences of people doing their own thing happens. And now, even today, you know, I... I feel sorrowful because in prophecy I see so many people that start off so right on and go in so positive a way to share with what Jesus is doing and looking forward to the return of Jesus and then they get off on a tangent and they start getting into hating someone and they start getting off into slamming people and they get off into doing this and doing that and attacking this and attacking that and tearing things down and they act like dogs biting and sniveling over the pieces and the scraps that are cast off from the table that they don't go and enjoy the bounty that God has given them and be thankful for what ministry they had and they have but instead they go after eating and consuming believers and Christians and people that should be encouraged to know God in a more intimate and personal way and the sad part is I know because I've participated or seen people do it on a regular basis that when I've thought of going that way it's hurt me because I have seen in myself the same attitude at times where I have to wrestle with it and say God I don't want to do that and I don't because I choose a different way I choose to point you and me and myself especially look at Jesus point to Jesus talk to Jesus go with Jesus be about Jesus be about this one thing that has saved us and will always continue to save us from the beginning until the end don't get off on the distractions and the attractions of the world and don't start biting and chewing and declaring that something else is off or wrong or whatever get right with God get together with Jesus walk alone with him because everything else people are gonna fall apart they're gonna fall down some of them will even go astray. And for me today, I saw how bad one has really gone way off. And I grieve and I pray and I hope that they will come back to the way, the truth, and the life, which wasn't meant to be separated into some theological idea, but meant to be 
summed up in the person that Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Anything else is just religion. The quality of true faith, Tozer, the quality of true faith is moral, not mental. I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they will, they have not known. Isaiah 42, 16. Sometimes we are prone to blame ourselves for unbelief when our trouble is nothing more than inability to visualize. There are some truths set forth in scriptures that place a great strain upon our minds. Divine revelation assures us that certain things are true which imagination simply cannot grasp. We believe them, but we cannot see them in the mind's eye. To think right, we must distinguish believing from visualizing. The two are not the same. One is moral, the other mental. Unwillingness to believe proves that men love darkness rather than light, while inability to visualize indicates no more than lack of imagination, something that will not be held against us at the judgment seat of Christ. True faith is not the intellectual ability to visualize unseen things to the satisfaction of our imperfect minds. It is rather the moral power to trust Jesus. In other words, you don't have to be a genius to have faith in God. All you need to do is follow Jesus. To be unafraid when going on a journey with his father, the child needs not to be able to imagine events. He need but know the father. Jesus Christ is our all in all. We need but trust him and he will take care of the rest. In everything and every way, this ministry has always been about the simple thing that we can say that we heard from a song a long time ago that in our way helped us. Just do your best and pray that it's blessed, and Jesus takes care of the rest. I have found deep satisfaction in these words of the prophet. I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. It is my contention and my provision that in all these things and sharing the faith that God has given me as a born-again Christian, as a Jesus gypsy, as a person who sits here talking with God, walking with God, and sharing the things that God has put upon my heart, as well as speaking to me audibly, visually, verbally, and in every way that he possibly can to communicate to you, the same can be known unto you, and you can do the same with yourself, where you are, as you are, in your circumstances, in your life, to those, with those, all around you, as Jesus is in you, working through you, accomplishing to you and for you all that he wants to be as he reveals himself, the summation of your faith and that which you are looking forward to becoming and being with. So you don't need all the other stuff because when you get focused on stuff, you become stuffing and God will take it and shove it into something else that's being prepared for an eternal flame that's going to burn forever. But don't be stuffing of God. Rather, be the sons and daughters of God that know the Father. Because Jesus wants us to know interpersonally the reality of a relationship with him. Not a designation of trying to solve the world's problems. You can't. It's not your position to do so. You weren't given the ability. But you are given the strength, the enjoyment, the fulfillment, the power, the love, the mercy, and the kindness to share with one other person, if not more, the very love of God that was given to you to save you from your sins that you likewise might save someone else from their mistakes, from their errors, from their failures, and from going to hell. God forbid that we become so distracted that we lead people to hell rather than lead them to a personal relationship with Jesus. I pray that distraction never come my way and that I always focus on the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus himself.